Coming up on First at Four, the federal government plans to end emergency funding to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll take a look at what that means for the cost of treatments and testing. And a meeting of Democrats is set to get tense as they mull over a new primary schedule. We'll explain. And the cold air continues throughout the mountains tonight, but nicer weather is on the way. The details on that coming up as First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. The U.S. government could be ending the COVID emergency in May. President Biden wants to end the public health emergency then. Kentucky's public health commissioner says it means COVID-19 will become like any other health issue. It also means you'll likely have to pay more if you need treatment, tests, or vaccines. WIT's Phil Pendleton spoke to Dr. Stephen Stack about the transition. May the 11th is the date for the national emergency to end. That doesn't mean that COVID-19 ends then, that the pandemic will be officially be over then, or that the disease will go away. It'll be with us for a long, long time. Dr. Stephen Stack tells me that we have learned how to deal with it, but it's time for some of these things to come to an end. There are other challenges healthcare face, but COVID itself is not the crisis that it was previously. Dr. Stack says the ending of the national public health emergency will impact a lot of people, primarily the more than 240,000 who qualified for Medicaid eligibilities. They'll need to transition into other programs such as Connect, the Kentucky Insurance Program, or Medicare. COVID has brought little to no cost for tests, vaccines, or treatments that ends on May 11th. But yes, in the months ahead, that's going to transition and COVID will become much like any other infection or medical concern that people uh, confront where they'll have to use the traditional medical system to seek evaluation and care. Well, COVID-19 is still impacting a lot of Kentuckians. There are still people testing positive. There are still people dying from it. Still some being treated in hospitals for it. Dr. Stack says you don't need to turn a blind eye to that. But now he says we have learned how to manage it. Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Kentucky Congressman Brett Guthrie has filed the Pandemic is Over Act to end the emergency sooner than May. Dr. Stack says there needs to be more time to transitionally end programs. People across the region are still working to clean up and move forward after the historic flooding of last summer. For Regina Quillen and her family, that process just became more difficult. After the flood filled their home in North Whitesburg and cleanup efforts were underway, Quillen's home caught fire last month. And though she lost everything inside, support continues to pour in from those in her community. Very humbling and very touching. So if there was, you know, I would like to be able to do that. I would like to be able to, to thank people and for people to, to know too that, you know, still a lot of good people in this world. A lot of people who care. Tonight at 11, you can hear more from Quillen, who says her loss is great, but her faith is greater. When you're browsing the grocery store aisles, a common item on the shelves is maple syrup, which is typically made in Canada, but one family farm in Letcher County has found a passion for making maple syrup right here in the bluegrass. South Down farm owner Seth Long says it all started as a homeschool experiment with their kids due to the large number of maple trees they had in their backyard. So we started one year just trying to uh, tap some trees, not knowing what we were doing, um, and we made maple syrup, and it was really good. And from that point on, it's kind of like um, we got bit by the maple bug. Long and his wife say they've been making maple syrup for about 10 years now, and each year the operation has continued to grow. WMT's Livy Calfee will have more about South Down Farm tonight at 6. Quiet and sunny out there throughout the region today. The only issue, you step outside and you feel like you've been transported to the Arctic. Well, it feels cold outside because it is cold outside. Pine Mountain along US 119 there in Letcher County. Road is dry, still got some lingering uh, snowfall in the grassy surfaces. I think we're going to do a number on that as we head into the weekend and melt some of what's left there. Sunshine draping over downtown Hazard. We're covered in shadow here thanks to the mountain and the building here at WYMT here in Hazard. 32 the current reading. Many of us are in those low to mid 30s but it feels closer to the lower 20s thanks to some westerly breezes in place right now. Satellite and radar all, almost all quiet through the entire eastern third of the country. A few snow showers, some lake effect snow showers off of Lakes Erie and Ontario up north of us. But for the most part, all is quiet. 
And they're also, you think we're cold. In just a few minutes, I'll have details on how brutally cold it is up in the northeast. And we're headed pretty chilly tonight. 17, an overnight low with some chilly conditions on the way. Details on when we warm things back up, though, in a few minutes. Keaton. Hey, Kevin. Many government officials agree that education is one of the most important topics in the state, but there have been differences when it comes to the number of vacancies for school staff and teachers. Schools in Kentucky are dealing with a big gap when it comes to teacher shortages. Governor Bashir says the state is nearly is down nearly 11,000 teachers, a number pulled from the government side, Kentucky Educator Placement Service. Really, the number is closer to 1,700. And so I think we need to make sure that we're talking with facts and realities uh, when it comes to actually addressing the problem. The last few years with the pandemic and the learning loss that occurred, uh, that there's a problem. And so I think Republicans are committed to working to address those problems. Kentucky Education Association officials also say there are around 11,000 openings for all school staff, not just teachers. The Biden administration launched a new web page this week with clear instructions for people applying for a specific type of student loan forgiveness. It's called Borrower Defense to Repayment, and it's for students who took out loans for a school that misled or lied to them. Many of these students went to for-profit colleges like Corinthian Colleges, ITT Technical Institute, and Marinello Beauty Schools. Until now, the process to loan forgiveness wasn't clearly established, but this new website has comprehensive information about how to apply. Since President Biden took office, more than one million borrowers have had $14.5 billion canceled under the program. Biden's separate plan to cancel up to $20,000 in student debt, that one's still held up in the courts. A new report indicates the decline in college enrollment we've seen in recent years seems to be easing up. National Student Clearinghouse Research Center released its latest report yesterday. It shows 2022 fall undergraduate enrollment decreased by just 0.6% compared to a year earlier. A portion of the easing is due to a 4.3% jump in freshman enrollment. But that still leaves freshman enrollment down 150,000 students from 2019, just before the pandemic. College enrollment had been declining for a decade, but the pandemic made the problem considerably worse. Democrats are gathering in Philadelphia this week for their annual winter meeting. While the members participate in panels and cocktail hours, WIMT Washington News Bureau reporter Peter Zampa tells us this meeting will bring a massive change to the political landscape. For 40 plus years, Iowa and New Hampshire have dominated the start of the presidential nominating process. This weekend, that's all likely to change with a big vote here in Philadelphia. It's a significant moment that can't be overstated or underestimated for our state. Late last year, President Biden suggested South Carolina go first, saying the state's more representative of the party. The party's rules committee put the request in writing in early December, and this weekend, the full party votes on it. South Carolina turned the tide for President Biden in 2020 after slow starts in Iowa and New Hampshire. Nevada's also benefiting from a positive 2020 result for Biden, now coming second in the calendar. What that does for our presidential candidates is makes them better candidates because they've heard from the voices that are least represented. While Matthew Funken's state is moving up, Scott Brennan's is on its way down. After a fiasco at the 2020 Iowa caucuses in which the results were delayed and unclear, Brennan admits it felt like the last straw. I think that played a big factor. You know, there, there was you know, a pound of flesh that was being sought. And can you blame anyone for feeling that way? Well, the problem is, is that we offered up a, a new caucus process that really you know, met all the touchstones the DNC wanted, and yet um, it fell on deaf ears. Both Iowa and New Hampshire have state laws saying their respective contests have to be first in the nation. And New Hampshire Democratic Chair Raymond Buckley says Republican-controlled legislatures will not budge on the current schedule. There's the possibility both states will vote first, regardless of what the DNC says, which could lead to stripping their delegates to the national convention in 2024. We're going to be first, uh, and uh, we're just hoping uh, that we can all work together and resolve this so that uh, we can have a successful 2024. South Carolina members tell me they're still whipping the votes to ensure victory on Saturday. That being said, no one I speak to is expecting any dramatic last minute changes. Reporting in Philadelphia, I'm Peter Zampa.
Coming up as First at Four continues, 10 major cities in the United States are now seeing the office workplace being filled at its highest rate since the pandemic. And we're keeping it cold tonight, but milder air is moving in for the weekend and beyond. Those details on the flip side. 